Well, there's no video on this, so I decided to make one. Here we got a Ford 2002 Ranger Edge. It's got the 3.0 engine. And what I'm going to do today, besides cleaning the battery terminals, of course, is the timing chain. And the reason why I have to change the timing chain is it's got 141,000 miles on it. And it started leaking at the timing chain housing where it mates to the engine block. Unlike the old Chevrolets, the water pump passages pass through the timing chain cover. So, if it develops a leak, which this one here I had to pressure test it with my cooling system pressure tester. And uh, wait for the coolant to run out. Since we're in Connecticut and it gets cold up here, yeah, I strongly recommend running good, clean antifreeze in a clean system for optimum performance. Okay, well, this this is what we got to start with, and I'll kick it back on when uh, I get some of this here tore apart and explain to you what I did. Now, what I've done so far is I drained, first removed the radiator cap. It, the radiator cap, some of you may or may not know, has a safety valve, spring, rubber seal. Feel that first indent. If it was hot, you'd just leave it there and it'd flow back to the overflow tank. When it cools down to where it's safe enough to touch, then you'd want to remove it. Then you place a suitable pan underneath, which that's the pan I used. It's empty now. I had a hose, I couldn't find it, so I used a block of wood to get the pan close as I could. Then I put it back in antifreeze jugs so it's marked. I know what's in that jug. I don't have to guess because we will be reusing that later on. After the radiator's drained and the coolant properly stored, then I used a chain wrench. A strap wrench would work much better. And uh, this fan, I found out, because I tried a little bit one way, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Well, this is backwards, so it's a left-hand thread. So a strap wrench would work much better, but I can polish out the little nicks in the teeth so it doesn't tear up the belt or replace the pulley if it is bad. But this is an old strap wrench, and the points are rounded off from years of abuse at Caterpillar. All right. Okay, now, got my chain wrench in there. I've succeeded in removing the reverse thread clutch fan assembly from liberating it from the water pump. And now I took the two screws holding the top of the shroud. One was over here, one was over here, and I put those in a Ziploc bag. Now, you can take a Sharpie and mark it. But I'm not going to leave it apart that long. I just segregate all my bolts as I take them off so I know what goes where. That's all for now. Well, as you can now see, I got the clutch fan and radiator shroud out. And I took a, some tape and cardboard and I taped it across the fins of the radiator just to keep it from getting damaged. And, uh, yeah. Now you want to make sure to use the proper tools for the job. You can get these type of pliers cheap at uh, Harbor Freight or somewhere, but uh, these happen to be Mac tools. I bought the entire set that they came with a bag because I've been a mechanic my, almost my whole life. Anyway, proper tools, less damage, faster you'll get your vehicle running again. When you're taking stuff apart, you want to be remain diligent and pay attention to everything because this is what I found on this particular truck. I don't know if you, how well you can make that out right there. There's part of the hose clamp right there. I had to turn the camera sideways, but you see the hose clamp? Steel hose clamp up against the aluminum air conditioning line. 
And that's probably, I'm thinking about a $140 line because it's a composite of aluminum and flex hose. So just keep your eyes open when you're doing this because you could find other issues that are a simple fix now, but an expensive fix later. Well, you'll never know what you'll run into when you're performing mechanics. I was trying to take this bracket off of that air conditioning hose. And there was no washer behind it, so it blocked my ability to put a this tappet set. This is a Craftsman tappet set. I've had them for about 25 years. I paid like 19 bucks for them, but I'm sure Sears still sells them. Anyway, I had to... Uh, drill the rivet out, deform the clamp and bracket to get to, to allow it to spin out past uh, everything you see there in front of you. And finally I got it worked out and then had to literally beat, or beat this wrench on there because this metal was bent over there. When I go back together with this I'll put a washer on that bolt head that's also acting as a nut and that'll prevent this from happening again a little bit of drop thread lock that'll prevent corrosion keep it from falling off and it'll be good all right okay here we see the water pump has been removed and new it's been cleaned up new gasket glued on i like to use a high tack gasket sealer on the part and then uh, you don't use anything on the engine block I don't care if the gasket sticks to the old part when it breaks but it does save you from having to clean for hours the engine block and hard to reach places to make sure you get a good seal between your mating surfaces anyway we got the water pump off one of the things that was a big problem was that clamp that was holding that AC line right there and now it's just a matter of uh, taking the timing cover off after we get the harmonic balancer off. To remove the harmonic balancer, you have to use a puller like this one here. And then after that, after I get that off, that will be attached with two bolts that come with the puller kit right to there. You take the bolt out, put this on, pull it off. And then it's just a matter of unbolting the cover and then doing a lot of cleanup. The most important part of this job is cleaning the surfaces, making sure you get as much material, gasket material, off the surface as possible. Does you know perfection would be great, not always possible, but you want to try and get it very, very, very clean, so you get a good sealing surface for when you go back together. Okay, got the 21 millimeter socket size bolt broke loose on the crankshaft on the harmonic balancer and as you can see I stuck uh, two metric bolts not from my engine grade 8 and they're screwed in the holes enough to allow me to stick that pry bar in there to prevent the engine from turning over while I use my uh, long locking flex head snap on half inch drive ratchet with a 21 millimeter deep well socket now you don't the socket's the most important thing. Uh, if you got and the bolts, never use your engine hardware for tooling. Just get some bolts. Doesn't matter. Bolts are cheap. Engine parts can be expensive. Okay, and I'll come back when I get the pie pie shape puller or P sign puller or whatever you want to call it, steering wheel puller. Go has a million names, but they're reasonably cheap to buy anywhere. You don't have to have top of the line. All right. Now you see my pie shape puller down there. Yeah. It wouldn't quite reach in the hole, so you have to ad lib on this style. Work with what you got. I used the bolt, put it back into the crankshaft, and unscrewed it about one and a half turns, and then used my puller. When I couldn't pull no more, I stopped. I, you know, I'm not double wrenching and putting an extra long pry bar on a 9 16 wrench. When I can't pull it no more, I stop. I come back. I take the pie shape puller off, and I check the bolt. And, yes, it's tight. But I can loosen it with the socket, 
which tells me that the pulley's coming off. So I undo a few more threads on the crankshaft bolt, and then I put the puller back on and pull it off a little bit more. Slow and steady on this. You don't want to break anything. Well, it took a little while, but as you can see, the crankshaft pulley is off. I have it over here on my messy bench. I've cleaned it up already. And you see a slight groove in there. But they got a fix for that. You don't have to buy a new one as long as your new harmonic bouncer, as long as your rubber is clean. And if you can see timing marks between the inner and outer parts of harmonic balancer, and they're lined up, then you're okay. If not, now would be a great time to replace that if that rubber was dry rotted or cracked. Uh, anyway, getting back to the groove in the crankshaft ceiling area, they make a speedy sleeve. And they have this glue, and it says, uh oh, warning. This product contains a chemical which is known to the state of California to cause cancer. You know what that's telling you? If you use this stuff and you get it on your hand, don't go to California. All right, I'm going to I'm going to put this chemical on both the speedy sleeve and the crankshaft around the top, around the beginning, and then I'm going to slowly push the two halves together. If not, then I'll use a seal driver which is made of aluminum, or you could use a block of wood and light tapping with a small hammer and make sure that you come down even and steady. And that will bottom out there. And with that, they give you, a, that's a hardened surface. So even if it does wear a groove in it, you can always later on, which I doubt you'd own the vehicle that long or live that long, cut it off and put another one on. Plus it takes a slightly oversized seal, but it all comes in a kit with the, timing gasket set. Okay, we'll come back after I'm done with that. 